Hey, welcome back to the channel at Play Me. We specialize in making short and sweet board game reviews that get you back to doing whatever you're doing. And today we're taking a look at Kingdom Rush. Yes, we have a big boy on the table today. Kingdom Rush is a one to four player tower defense game. There are a handful of tower defense games out there, but this is the best one that I've played. I, I feel like I'm skirting around the elephant in the room. Kingdom Rush comes from a very, very popular IP. They have a free online game of uh, Kingdom Rush available on like every device you can get. And it is just so much fun. Like my whole family has played it. And so we are just delighted by the IP. My son and I spent some time sneaking ahead to see what was coming up in the future levels. And we were getting really excited to like see towers and bosses that we remembered from the game. In this wave, we're greeted with constant waves of monsters. They spawn at these spawn points. And when it's time to spawn a new horde, you just take the top card off the deck, put it in the tray and move it to the next exit. All of the monster hordes will move closer to the exit, which is where your kingdom is. I have this game set up for a three star mode, so that means we get four health. These trays are such a clever solution because when we do damage to a monster, we're going to put damage directly on the tray. And then when it's time for the monster horde to move, we're just going to move the tray towards the exit. So it keeps everything really compact, really reduces the chaos and mess. The different ways that you can do damage to these monsters is with all the different towers. So you'll see here that you have these different building sites. They're just clear plastic and you set them up according to the directions. And these will indicate where each player can have a building site. So let's say I have this mage tower. I can place it and I am playing the wizard. I can place it anywhere that there's a purple spot. Unless it has a little rotate icon, the damage always has to be in the same orientation as it shows. So if I put my card like that, I'm going to have to put my damage like this. So maybe I'll take these three out here. Okay, and then we're all going to collaboratively work together to put our towers into the building sites where they make the most sense to cover up as many of the monsters. Um, these little monsters, when they get through, they take one of your health out. The big ones take four. There is ways that you can stop the trays from advancing towards your kingdom. One is to have these little soldier guys on them, which uh, come from the militia towers. And so if there's a soldier on them, then the tray won't move during the movement phase. This will take a damage and be removed. And if there's a hero stopping that movement, um, that hero will also take a damage and be removed if they die from that damage. Heroes can always be respawned and everything. It's not a big deal. And they're equipped with really powerful abilities that make this game really sing. You know, it's, it's very similar to the IP. So let's say I had this one with some damage on it. Because my hero is there, it stops. Well, it's not going to stop this other tray from moving past me. If you look here, you'll see the little wolves that have the double arrow. That means that they move twice when they move. So if I'm going to be moving that tray, this tray is stopped. This tray is stopped. So this is going to move one, two, and now it's right at my gate. So watch your backlog because in a flash, they can be skirting right past you before you've even seen the whites of their eyes. You have to always be clearing trays so that they're off the board entirely. Like when you clear one like this, it gets removed from the board. And on the back of it is a gem. Then you will get a gem. You use your gems to buy more towers. Two gems for a level one tower three gems for a level two tower. You can never buy level three and level four towers. They can only be, only be upgraded. So that's a player board and this is this character's special attack. In your hand, you're usually gonna have a tower or more and your hero card. When it's the player's turn, we're all gonna work together to choose what we use and play. And if you ever get into a position where your tower is not very effective in the positions that you're allowed to place it, you can then upgrade it. So what you do then is you grab the next level upgrade. So this one is a level one. So from the display, I would grab a level two upgrade and then I would turn this upside down and move it into the incoming tower section of the player next to me. You're always passing them around. So then the next round, when we're restarting after the um, horde spawning and movement phases, then we are gonna get our turns. What you do then is grab any towers that were in your incoming, pick up your character card again, because now it lets you activate your character. Uh, things that you can do with your activated character is if he is knocked out, you can stand him back up. If he is up, you can dispatch him to the battlefield. This is his health, this is his movement, and these are the various abilities that he 
can do at the very beginning you just start with the base one but then as you play more you get more abilities you also want to be very vigilant about taking out certain uh, monster abilities so for example you want to make sure that you're targeting all of the healing monsters so that you don't have to fight them twice We'd rather leave one tray totally untouched and finish one because as soon as you finish one, you'll get the gems that you need to build more towers and, uh, and you're clearing the monsters off the board, right? Like I said, having a backlog of trays can be really, really detrimental. It can catch up to you fast. Don't do it. I told my kids that it feels like Christmas whenever I get a fully upgraded tower in my um, incoming towers and they disagreed that it does not feel like Christmas and I said well I'm old and my Christmas isn't as exciting as yours so yes it does for me. Um, as you progress through the campaign it'll increase in difficulty. It's a 10 game campaign. I have not played all of them so I can't guarantee that they're all great or that it all gets better. I would say that my biggest drawback with the game is that the maps are so short. It does mean that you have much shorter play times which is very convenient for families although I don't think that I would have minded a longer playtime and having a longer map with let's say more monsters and having more of that challenge just because this thing is such a bear to set up and put away. The important things are to try to control the board. So upgrade whenever you can and communicate. Really, really communicate. Don't get in each other's way. And when you complete the objective for your scenario, uh, you win. And then you get stickers. You get one star if you completed the level with under 12 health. You get two stars if you completed the level under eight health. And you get three stars if you complete the level under four health. Uh, then there's a heroic challenge, which is do beating the level with just one health. That gets you the pretty little wings. And then if you want the iron um, shield, you have to do the iron challenge, which is different for every level. I was very much a completionist when I played the online game and that has transferred over to this. I get a real nerd on for maps. I love them in games, I love them in books, I just kind of like maps in general and then putting stickers on the maps. Oh, mama. The game is challenging enough to keep you on your toes but not so hard that it becomes its own deterrent. I'm looking at you, Seventh Continent. Overall, we were pleasantly surprised by this game. I didn't really know what to expect going in. I didn't go in on the Kickstarter because I was a little skeptical that it would be good. But as we started playing with it, I really enjoy the collaborative environment that it creates for my kids. I really enjoy that it is tactical, that we do have to be like communicating, working together to get through the challenges. They are difficult enough. I heard adults say that it's too hard. Uh, I We don't find that in our family. We don't find it to be too hard, but uh, I've heard people say that. You can definitely get it to any table that has a jovial and uh, collaborative energy. I haven't played the whole campaign, but I can say with confidence that the stuff that I have played is very good and I have a lot of confidence in continuing the campaign and I have ordered some of the expansions for it. I, you know, very comfortably recommend this game. So this has been Play Me. If you like what we do, please like and subscribe and please check out some of our other videos. In the meantime, happy gaming.